Roger Mudfossil University. Today we're going to go over preservation of soft tissues, why it happens, how it happens, and I'm going to give you a bunch of examples. Now, I'm going to show, this is lungs, this is a lung, this is a lung. If you look at it carefully, you can see it's exact same architecture, same holes here and there, same divot here, same divot here. This one's filled in with mud and that one isn't. That's the only difference. Of course, it's a little different size. Now, structurally, a lung is limestone. A lung is limestone. That's what they're made out of. And then inside of it, you have organic tissues. Now, um, I can go through the anatomy and all that business, and I probably will. And then I, at the end, I said, I'm going to show you something about a cave. Well, we're not going to do that in this video. The cave, they actually entered through one of these holes in a lung. And I will show you that in a separate video because this ran a little long. By the way, these are th th a lung. That's a lung. This is a little tiny lung. You see that? And they, they, all these little crystals in there. This is very um, characteristic of of what's inside of a lung is all these crystals. And you can see this here. These co all these colored crystals. I've shown this many, many times. And they are what's. And this is a lung. Here's another type of lung. They're, they come in all different types and sizes. And you know, I'm sure different creatures. There's one that just turned into mud, that's a literally turned into mud, a mud lung. That's one, you know, i show this later, that one there gushed blood all over. This one here is the pleura, which is this stuff, has eroded away and you get into the red meat of the, of the flesh of the lung here. And of course that one right there is uh, DNA tested. Uh, I have a ton of them. I have them all over the place. So, and they come in all different times. You know, I've shown this one here. This one here has been, it's like this one, only it was crushed into itself and compacted. And But that's another lung. And I don't know what kind of creatures they're all from. The only one I know for 100% sure is this one, which is DNA tested, certified as human. And I, I would guess that was human, but I don't know. I can't tell. And now, as I've said in the last video, I, I, they're stopping, they're not, they're, they're not testing the mud fossils. They're refusing to test them. Now, why is that? That's a real, that's a, that's a, uh, that's just not right. I mean, it's just not right. Why shouldn't they test this? If we say we want to know if these were human or what they were, because they're taking the, the mud out of the, the DNA out of the mud. So don't tell me that you can't do it. Obviously you can do it. They're taking out of mud that erodes on cave floors now. Harvard is. I know absolutely no question whatsoever. Harvard, Max Planck, absolutely no question. And I sent them my stuff on this years ago. And then all of a sudden, oh, we're finding mud that has DNA in it. Well, it's, it's, they're coming right out of the rocks that I'm telling you, you've you got to look for. So anyway, that's, that's another story. But all of this is real. There's no question it's factual. Fossil University today with a lesson on the preservation of mud fossils. And everybody's, oh, how can this be? It can't be, it can't be. Well, it is and it is. Now, here's the deal. We're talking about the Great Flood, recorded in every culture, so don't tell me this is all creationist stuff, so forget about that. Now, it was a great flood that covered the entire earth with salt water. This is recorded, it is pretty much known event. Soft tissues preserve with salt. They used to preserve them. They would preserve meat and so forth using salt. It, it, it saves them. And now when they're in the water, the salt water, the um, bloating sort of gases that explode tissues bleed off into solution in the water. Now the bones are a whole different story. Bones dissolve in salt water. They never find any bones in salt water wrecks where the shipwrecks, they're gone after a few years, they're just totally gone. And what happens is they get invaded and they get destroyed and it's because there's, they are sequestered, they're, they're, they're separated from everything else by a membrane in the body that keeps them out of the salt water solutions. When you die, the membrane doesn't do the job anymore. So that's what happens, bones go away. And when they're encased in mud, it's a different story. They turn into source rock. We'll talk about that in a minute. So now you have the great flood. They're all floating and bobbing around and giving all their volatile organic chemistry up into the water. 
finally that everything sort of settles down and there's just a chunk of a lot of mud things settle into the mud and they become entombed in the mud so mud entombment does two things it keeps them out of the oxygen and it plates organic silicon in the external skin your external skin keeps you away from the rest of the environment it keeps you protected it's 50 times more dense with silicon in your skin than it is in the rest of your body the skin erodes and creates sand literally its skin is silicon silicon bonds with the oxygen SiO2 silicon dioxide is sand right so that's my statement is when they get entombed in the mud the first thing that happens they get plated so it starts to create silicon dioxide on the skin and it it coats the skin with this silicon dioxide so the internal stuff is now being invaded with a very small molecules water h2o can squeak through that plating and these are just like shingles on a house just like shingles on a house sio2 it goes thup, 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 right down the line and they plate all right so it's just like plating a cheap ring all right now so that creates the internal organs and so forth to be away from the, the outside and they they're, they're just locked in there's nothing they can do so they begin to stabilize and they get stabilized because molecules will invade them and 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 and, and mineralize them and create bring in little other molecules that attach and so forth depending upon what is in the the moisture that's percolating through these things now what is the what, what happens to them what, what do they turn into red flesh in your body or in a creature's body turns to red clays and mud that's what happens they turn into red clay and mud and now harvard and uh, max planck and uh, probably a lot of other ones because they've been doing that now for over a year are are just taking mud out of caves and they say okay let's see what dna is in this mud well the mud came from the mud fossils so they're just seeing what's in the mud and they're actually digging up the people's bodies and taking the mud out of the bodies thinking it's just mud well it's not it's the bodies no connective tissue is a whole different thing than the red clays and the red flesh connective tissue is a white hard strappy tough calcium carbonates so the connective tissue turns to limestone calcium carbonate CaCO3 very very tough no, and, and that doesn't erode. That's the stuff that they find all over the place and they built the pyramids on. Now, encased bone inside these, these SiO2 encased muds turns to source rock. And I have them here. I show them somewhere around here. I'll show it later. Oh, here we go. All right. This is that. Let me put a little water on. This is what happens to mud fossil bones. See, that's a mud fossil bone. You see it? You see this cartilage and everything right at the top? You see this hole? That's where the ligament attaches, and the ligament holds this bone to the other bone that holds against it. And that hole, that is what's called a tuberosity, and in that tuberosity, all those little tiny holes are where these little tiny tendon enthesis balls attach. I've shown this over and over. Now, what about the bone? What about the bone? That's what's left of the bone right there. That's it. The rest is this black, reddish looking stuff. It's ferritins and 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 the red bone marrow turns to um turns to all these bitumens and coals and gases and oils and all that and that's what it is so you're not going to find bones you very rarely find bones that's it that's the bone right there so you know obviously you know it was pretty well filled up this wrapping is called tunica by the greeks they called it tunica and it actually wraps right around this bone i don't know if you can see that little triangular wrapping or probably not 
but they all have like a wrapping and a coating. Now, this is what's called fascia. Well, it might be called, they might call it something else in these bones, but it's, um, it's the wrapping and the separation zone between the bones and the rest of your flesh. So it keeps them separated, and they separate in death exactly the same as they do in life. They keep every single tendon filament and, 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 and fibril, they call them, those little, little hex fibrils. They're not little, they're gigantic because the creatures are gigantic. All right, so that's about the bone. Now, we're going to look, well, let's finish this up. So, encased bone turns to source rock, I just showed you. That's the encased bones, which are hydrocarbons, methane, gases, bitumen, oil, coal. It's uh, CH3s, which is carbon. And it's um, pretty much methane and all that business. All right, combustive stuff. Now, in fossil fuels, the chemistry and pH and geothermal conditions at the preservation site are extremely diverse. Sometimes it's hot, sometimes it's cold, sometimes it's a lot of water, sometimes no water, sometimes it's flowing, sometimes not flowing, sometimes it's got acids, sometimes salt, sometimes this, sometimes that, all kinds of different chemistry. All of that plays a part. So there's no there's no rhyme or reason. I'm gonna show you about 20 different lungs here, or I don't know, 10 maybe, that um, you'll see. No. And then I just talked about the fascia coats and separates in life and it also keeps it separated after death. I will show you that and there's no question about it. I called it, I wrote a paper on this about four or five years ago called, called fascia, uh, fascia facilitated fossilization. All right. At first I thought it was the reason for the fossilization and it is not. It is a, it's just a byproduct of the fossilization. The fascia separates all of these organs into their own little, like this is a lung. That's a human lung. And that's DNA tested. And any, any anatomist that knows anything about lungs knows that's the pattern of the pleura on a human lung. No question whatsoever. And at the end, it has this little red flappy thing that hangs off. I mean, I've, I've done my homework, trust me. This is a lot. And it's DNA certified, 100%. And I have lots of them, and they come in all different types. See this one here? Look at that. This is the blood was coming out. Blood would literally, literally ran out of this five years ago. Or six years ago, whenever it was, when I found this. And out of each one of these little spots, blood ran out of there. Right? They get encased in this and nothing can leave. Blood is unbelievably resilient. It's absolutely incredible uh, how strong blood can hold up. And it, it's, it's something that's called chelation. The blood itself gets surrounded by what they call ligands, which are little molecules that have an, a, an affinity to hold on to these metal complexes. They surround them and they keep them, keep them protected. And then to, to open them up, the body would crack them with a little bit of acid. And so that's what you need to do is hit them with a little tiny smidge of acid. It cracks the bonds. It opens up the hemoglobin and the DNA and all that stuff just drips out. Same thing with the lungs and so forth. Now, let's go into these lungs. I'm going to show you something that's very cool because a guy sent me a video where they, they went and they found these, <laughs> U.S. see this cave. And... Um, and they entered through a lung. <laughs> and I have one here. I have a couple of them to show exactly the same. Exactly the same. Any research facility that wants to understand mud fossils and wants to get some DNA testing allowed. It's not, they're not allowing them. I'm getting, and you look at this. Why are DNA tests on mud fossils not allowed? I got two people in one day sent me, said we're trying to get mud fossils verified. And uh, DNA tested, they refuse in Europe and in the United States, and 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 they're re refusing to me too. And I'm not getting any responses from anybody about this. You know, anybody that's supposed to be doing this kind of work, we're willing to pay. It's not a question that we're not willing to pay. Why is it not allowed? All right, if you have an issue with it, you get a hold of me. I'll talk to you. And this is factual stuff. This is not bogus, silly stuff. And it's starting to annoy the hell out of me that you people are just so arrogant that you can just walk away from this and charge people thousands and thousands of dollars to mislead them. All right, now I'm going to just throw in a couple extra little 
tidbits that I have in here about brand new species that we have uncovered that you refuse to examine. It's disgraceful. This is a no-toe foot. The toes are built into the feet and enclosed in flesh. There is toes. It's spring-loaded. That is that this is connective tissue type of tendinous material and it has these pins and spindles and torsion springs that wrap around the foot to act as tendons and she found a bunch of other ones and i have some here too and people have found them all over the world so this and this is the red bloody fleshy tissues it's a, it's an anatomical foot but it's not human it was is some form of cyborgish thing and i have done a lot of research on this and it is what i'm saying it is and these are the no toes that's one of the no toes that's if you look on your own foot this is where your vein and artery and so forth run right across before the toes all emerge these toes are in place this is not like a a shoe this is a regular foot and that this is skin that's all skin I know, it sounds crazy. That's where the guy's bone, you know, the um, tibia ran up. And then the fibia, which comes down, is like the big bone that sticks off the side. They just crack right off. But you can see the actual outline of the bone here. And this running off, that's where blood is. You see blood is here? The same thing on your front of your foot. You look, you're going to have blood. You can see the blood vein is right there at the surface. This ran out of this broken bone and blood. So, and this was where the bone was. That's the calcaneus tendon right here. So it's, it's not a human being foot, but it's, it's pretty close. Now, the other cyborg foot was, was totally cyborg. So there's, there's a whole bunch of things going on here. This is in Triassic rock. That's a human footprint. And not only that, the gray shale, Triassic is red bed, on top of that is gray shale, on top of that is black cat. That's Triassic. That's 200 million years ago, something like that. Well, guess what? This is gray clay, and it's pushed down through the red bed, and that's the black cat that goes on top of it. I say this happened within a couple of days. This had to be soft, this had to be soft, because it pushed right down through it. I can remove this, and it is removed, and this sits right on top, and there was actually, you know, I've, I've molded this and put my foot in it, and it, I, there's things called suck-ups in here. When it, the guy put his foot down here, and he went, he pulled these little dimples back up. You can see them. It's absolutely flawless. Then this is the black cap, very thick on top. They say this is a 50 million year event, the Triassic, these red bed, gray shale, uh, gray clay, and the black cap. Well, I'm saying it happened all at the same time, as far as I can tell. That was wet, that was wet, and this landed on top quick enough before it eroded even the tiniest bit. So I'm saying it was like some kind of worldwide event or you know if they if they say the triassic happened all, all over the world i'm in an area where it's triassic dinosaur state park is right down the road and they they have all the dinosaur footprints these guys were living here at the same time that's a human footprint see there it is disassembled that was this piece that was on the side this is the footprint pushed right down that's gray shale so this is below the red bed. So the gray shale was wet. The red bed was wet. <laughs> then this landed on top. And when I got it, the whole thing was one big piece. And I separated it open. It just fell apart. 